Hello again. You're watching today on ENCA, GSTV Channel 43, with me, Dan Moyane. Thanks for joining us on this Friday afternoon. Fearless Soweto uprising leader Tsetse Mashinini will be remembered at the 8th Memorial Lecture that's going to take place tomorrow in Soweto. Mashinini was one of the students who led the 1976 uh, Soweto student uprising. The pupils were protesting against the use of Africans as a medium of instruction in schools under the then Bantu education system. Well, let's discuss more details about this year's Tsetse Machinini Memorial Lecture. I'm joined by Maurice Isaacson High School alumnus, Omri Makwale. Omri, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us and welcome uh, to today. I can't believe it's the eighth annual lecture, Memorial Lecture. Time just flies since you started honoring Tsetse Machinini every year in this manner. What can people look forward to tomorrow? Yes, thank you for the opportunity to ENCA. And, and uh, we, we, we are promising that tomorrow it will be another uh, magnificent lecture, you know, on honor and safety machining, the eighth memorial lecture. From tomorrow we are having two speakers uh, addressing the two key problems of the time. We believe the serious problem of the time is unemployment crisis you know, the youth, and uh, since 1994, we are experiencing the highest unemployment in the country. So we, we think that is the critical problem that must be addressed. And we have a speaker, uh, Dr. Paril Huta, who is going to address that. And uh, we believe he's more experienced and competent for that type of field to explain uh, what are the causes of unemployment and what can we do to solve the unemployment crisis of South Africa. And, and the second speaker is uh, Professor Zeblon Bilagazi, pro, uh, the Vice Chancellor of West University. He will be talking about vocational education of the future, vocational education and training of the future for, as part of addressing the issue of unemployment so that when people are skilled, we believe that uh, when the relevant skills are there, people then will have jobs. You know, this is why we are tackling these two topics tomorrow. Yeah, they're very important topics, particularly because when you look at the skills gap in the country today, it does not look like we'll ever be able to close it. And when you consider, Omri, that I think it's some three and a half million young South Africans are not in education, they are not uh, in training, they are not in employment at all. It's like a big lost, uh, lost generation. Are you hoping that there'll be some... Uh, motivational and inspirational talk, for example, by Professor Villagazi about the future? Yes, we, 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 we have confidence in Professor Villagazi. We think that he's uh, the most up to uh, uh, the, 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 the suitable person to address this issue. And uh, he'll be in a position because he, he grew up in South Africa, grew up in Katahu. Uh, he knows uh, the conditions very well in South Africa and in South Africa. So, he, he will be in a position to, to, to see how uh, this uh, technical, vocational technical education uh, can be, you know, projected into the country and how uh, we can, you know, with it, uh, make sure that the young people have got skills that when they finish whatever education, then they can get a job. At the moment, we have graduates who are unemployed, and primarily because maybe the skills they have are not required by the job market. Yeah, maybe some of our younger viewers, so to speak, might not uh, remember Zietzi Machinini. What stood out for you about him? Yeah, Zietzi was, a, a, was, was, a, was a, a very robust debater, a very intelligent young man and very, very robust debater. He very acute logic. He, he could, uh, you know, analyze things uh, uh, quickly. But what was important with him was he was reading a lot. He used to read a minimum of three James Hadley Chase a week when we were struggling to finish one. He was reading about three a week. So he was the first reader in terms of uh, a James Hadley Chase or the novels of the time. And this is what made him to be very eloquent in, in, the, in the English language and very eloquent in debates. So he was uh, somebody that uh, should be emulated. We believe that if the youth of today were reading as much as he did, they would be far better off. 
you know. Yeah, I mean, if you see the latest research uh, shows that uh, I think the bulk of our school children in grade four cannot read for meaning. And this is in 2023. It looks like we're still battling with, uh, with, uh, with things like that. That CAT machine did very well and, and, and his generation, as, as you've just said. Now, with an annual lecture, you're always hoping that uh, there will be a link uh, with, uh, with his legacy. Is there going to be such a, a link tomorrow? Yes, there is a link. The idea is that the machine was addressing the problems of his generation, of his time. The Africans as a medium of instruction and, and Bantu education and apartheid. Now today's problems are different from those that he addressed. Today's problem is unemployment. So the, the, the lecture of tomorrow is to address the current problems as compared to the who was addressing the current problems of the time. So but basically what we are saying is that the lecture is used to address the current problem uh, in the same way as THT was addressing the problems of his time. That's how the link comes in. Yeah, I mean, uh, you've mentioned that he, he was a good debater. When I uh, came to Morris Isaacson High School in 1976, I joined the debating society and he was our, our leader. And I mean, you... I mean, the eloquence there, we just could not, uh, could not believe. But the commitment to improving oneself, it's one uh, kind of image I still uh, keep uh, in my mind about C.T. Machinini. He really didn't accept mediocrity. Yes, he, he really didn't accept me. And that's why he was, he was hardworking. He was hardworking. And uh, I always thought to him, of course, that he would have made a very good lawyer. He was hardworking, debating, reading a lot. Uh, improving himself all the time so he was really an ideal student to you know to follow and to, to admire you know and uh, i think that the, the, the youth of today if they can read as much as he did and uh, and have the passion to improve themselves on a continuous basis the country will go far yeah so what's the program like tomorrow you've given us the names of the two main speakers uh, you've got the former statistician general dr palili hotla who will focus on the uh, rising unemployment rate especially among young people the challenge there and uh, you've got the vice chancellor of vets university professor zeblon villagas will talk about the future of vocational education and training what time and what's the venue is the venue the school itself morris isaacson high school in cwj Yes, the, 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 the lecture will be held inside the schoolyard, uh, at the mu music center inside the schoolyard. And uh, it starts at 11, I mean 13.30, 13.30, but effectively from 2 o'clock. 13.30, it will be uh, like music, welcoming people, but uh, at uh, 14 hours, the lecture program starts effectively. And uh, we have also poetry by Marco Mele Manaka, will provide poetry and uh, uh, on top of the speakers. So uh, people are welcome, but it's with reservations because the music center has got restrictions of uh, numbers. We can only take up to 250. Okay, good luck. I'm sure it's going to be a very, very inspirational and successful eighth uh, annual memorial lecture for CET Machine taking place tomorrow uh, from about half past one to two o'clock at Maurice Isaacson High School in central western Jobavu in Soweto. That was Omri uh, Makaule. He is uh, one of the generations of the 76th generation. He was also at Maurice Isaacson High School at the same time as CET Machine. It feels like it's a long time ago. Now, as